A loose one. Oh. A loose what? A loose pod. Yeah. Is it? Wait, are we recording? We're recording. Oh, I we're mean, back. We're back. Hi. Can you call 9-11 a, a loose topic? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to really get into it. <laughs> um, this is the episode where we really get to the bottom of what happened on 9-11. Yeah. Loose change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, Happy early... 9-11 20th anniversary 20th of 9-11. anniversary it's a big yeah it's a big day yeah oh you have cigarettes uh, we i mean we can have i might one. i might have one after yeah you reward yourself for, for house, a yeah. pod well done um it's really fittingly beautiful that it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and we're in the middle of the next crackdown on civil liberties with the vaccine mandates yeah Yeah. it's just like perfect how those stars aligned i know Uh, i planned it better myself (laughs) my thing i guess we'll get into the vaccine mandates later that's a different portion i'll save it um where were you on uh, 9-11 anna um I, i was in my junior year spanish class oh wow and my teacher no way senora arango junior yeah i was in i think i was either sophomore or junior in high school i graduated in 2000 i was in fifth grade yeah so i guess that checks out does it wait hold on i'm sorry i'm really hung over i was 10. and my math is bad your math is so bad it's so it. atrocious <laughs> I just want to say that real math geniuses are really bad at arithmetic. Just saying. Just kidding. I'm actually just uniquely bad at math. Yeah. Um, same. I, I mean, was, it's I not was, really for, for women. It's not for women. Yeah. I was talking to somebody about like SAT scores and my SAT score was very mediocre, but I had a perfect score on the verbal and like mm. you can imagine a really shockingly low score on the math. Yeah. I have, I had a similar experience. Yeah. Um, but speaking of SATs, I was in a, I, maybe it was sophomore year, um, Spanish class. Um, Sorry. <laughs> like Jang, like, Sorry. I'm trying to just like the people. towers falling. <laughs> oh um, my God. Yeah. Okay. Sophomore. I think sophomore year maybe makes maybe. more sense. Cause what that makes sense though, because I'm five years older than you and you were 10 and I was 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 10th grade, fifth grade. Um, and I was, uh, um, like a young like I was a year younger not a year but like a half a year younger because I, I went to school like at four and a half I went to kindergarten or something mm-hmm. I don't remember anyway um I was in um Spanish class the news was on my teacher Senora Arango who had a, <laughs> a very um voluminous and plush mustache mm. burst into the classroom and was like turn that off she was and, like ay caramba yeah basically <laughs> um and lo siento i remember that they pulled a lot of the muslim parents because i grew up in a very heavily um, muslim district like next to the biggest masjid in central jersey and a lot of the muslim parents came and pulled their kids out of class because they wisely figured that their kids might be the subject of like violent reprisals they already knew it was jihadists jews um (laughs) no they already knew israel yeah um (laughs) So like the <laughs> the only person I wanted to see that day, um, who was my uh, hot Pakistani boyfriend, mm. was gone, and I was all alone. Oh, Where were wow. you? I well, I was on the West Coast in Las Vegas, right. so it was really early, and it was like five a.m. Mm-hmm. And my dad woke me up, and like the stupid Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Unrelated. Unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> And then the plane hit the first tower. <laughs> no, my dad woke me up and was like, he, I remember him saying something really grave about how like World War Three or something yeah. basically started. And I like didn't understand it. I was 10. Yeah. So yeah. I like, was reeling and not really confused. Yeah. Um, but could tell that it was like a really important day. Mm-hmm. And I remember because China was in the news around this uh-huh. time because of some like plane stuff. Yeah. So much like I still do to this day on the pod, I mm-hmm. like loosely associated some different things that I knew about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, China did it? Like, mm-hmm. 
I <laughs> was I had this like hunch about it being China, but of course, as we know, it was Bin Laden. Yeah, but China did this one, so the ta- yeah, China yeah. did do this. One. <laughs> so in one well, way or another, America. Yeah, America. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna um, go with like a, a um, consensus of China and America, a coalition. Yeah, did the There's, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Um, but in any case, America clearly had its hand in both of these major World War Three and World War Four, like uh, ongoing crises, yeah. states I mean, of exception, whatever. I'm seeing a lot of talk on the TL about about nine eleven. Yeah. Um, being an inside job. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that was something we were still like litigating. I thought everybody knew that. Yeah. Nine eleven was an inside yeah. job. I mean. Of course, like that's not even a, that far fetched of a conspiracy. Yeah, it's not. I thought it, it was that. accepted truth. I feel like a lot of people are obsessed with the nine eleven truth or like it was an inside job thing because people just don't want to grapple with the fact that the same thing is going on now. Right. So they're just, yeah, they're displacing their like contemporary anxieties onto yeah onto a totally. Past accepted an obsolete conspiracy theory that's no longer dangerous or risky to talk about whatsoever yeah yeah um because yeah at the end of the day like if you were to really like uh you know be honest about where you stood in the current situation it would probably provoke some soul searching and moral inventory you mean COVID? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think a lot of people are just buying in full throttle, though. Yeah. Into the plan, the plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so a this lot of late night pods. Yeah. We're really letting loose. Yeah. We're going to try to go to midnight so that when the clock strikes, it'll be nine eleven. Just kidding. I, <laughs> I would never do that. We're going to pod until 8 11 a.m. Whenever the, the first place. When the, I don't even know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also find the 9-11 truth or stuff to be very, very boring. It's grading. It's grading. It's like we get and it. Wait, there's so it, many details and like, yep, you, you read the commission report. Yeah. And you've got men online are just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, did you watch Curtis Yarvin on Tucker Carlson? Not yet, but I will. But as I was telling you, I'm I'm really hungover because I went to the King Crimson show oh, yeah. last night, and I was like in the audience, surrounded by I don't know, like two thousand dudes, and they all literally looked dudes like rock. Campbot or <laughs> Curtis or Steve Bannon. Like there was three types of guys, lots of guys with like really okay, wild curly Mary mops fuck or Kill Campbot. Curtis, Steve Bannon. That's so easy. Fuck Bannon. Fuck Bannon. Mary Mary Curtis, Curtis. because he's such a nice family man. And obviously, kill obviously, that's an easy one. It's real. It's too easy. It's (laughs) it's a no brainer. (laughs) Yarvin's looking for a girlfriend. He published like that. Yeah, I saw that thing that people were debating whether it was like cringe or based. And I was just like, (laughs) hit me up and. We'll go to Dime Square. I'll intro you to some like BPD art hoes. Well, he doesn't want a BPD art ho. All men want BPD that art hoes. That is so true, Anna. Yes. And also <laughs> the right girl, you know, would change for the right man. That is also true. You can make a hoe into a housewife. Yeah, you totally. Really play your cards, right? He seems eligible. I like his bob. Yeah, me too. I like it a lot too. I f- keep and thinking like, who does it remind me of? And I was like, Daria Morgendorfer or like um, Freaks and Geeks or Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I like the man's hair. I think it's cute. I'm it bringing it to the hairdresser next time healthy. I get a. I yeah. had the same thought. I kind of was like, that's kind <laughs> of like a mid length bob I've been dreaming of. And it looks very '90s. And also, I feel like he would look very much um in the right place in dime square because everybody like he unironically has that 90s gen x aesthetic with like a button down and jeans and square toe shoes and leather people jacket. in leather jacket and people dress like that semi-ironically now yeah totally. like i was also 
I revealed to you a very embarrassing detail about last night, which is that mm. I pre-gamed at Clando, went to the show, which was at Beacon Theater on the Upper West Side, came back to Clando. And I was looking around. It was like a bunch of guys with like middle parts and like olive drab shirts, leather jackets, jeans and square toed loafers. Yeah. And like a necklace. His influence. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how was the interview did you I didn't watch it because it's really long okay and I like kind of watched a small portion of it Um, but I've never really read anything Curtis has written I was very turned off by like the Mencius mold bug moniker just aesthetically didn't vibe with it yeah kind of grouped it into the same category so I don't really know what he's on about I don't either. Uh, That's unimportant. Yeah, but I got the vibe I got from his Tucker. I also didn't realize Tucker had like a daytime show. He does where he interviews people like um, Angela Nagel was on it. I forgot who else, but he'll interview people for like an hour and a half. I love it. Yeah, the show should interview us, frankly, having not watched it. (laughs) So Tucker, are you a deadhead? Mm, Yeah. So is Ann Coulter, apparently. Yeah, that's sick. I mean, um, but yeah, I the the set the set is very chaotic. It makes me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> um, but I did this portion. I did watch Curtis was talking about um, sort of like a cold civil war mm-hmm. that's going on in the United States. Yeah, and not really knowing at all what he's talking about but kind of understand that's how it feels yeah and so the vaccine mandates yeah to me yeah are incredibly sus for all the obvious reasons Mm -hmm. but also because i feel like distrust in the government is at like an all-time high like for all the like Fear mongering that the media does around like QAnon and like insurrectionists and stuff like that. Um, why then do the most like draconian, totalitarian, freaky measures that are obviously going to make people like that go insane? Yeah, and that you are know? that are going to like confirm people's worst fears. And exactly, suspicions. exactly. Like there has to just be a more tactful way to do it and i think to shove it's purposefully down people's throats yeah it's purposefully done in this way to like stoke the flames of like culture war yeah i mean it's and like, inflame people who are already like feeling incredibly treaded upon yeah and distrustful and reactionary you know yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it. I think it, like, totally just, just like, policy. now that you say that, it, like, kills two birds with one stone, because on the one hand, it, like, reassures, like, liberals and all these leftists who are, like, secretly pro-Biden, though they pretend not to be, that he's, <laughs> like, based and is, like, a strong leader, you know, mm-hmm. and on the right track, and then it kind of, like... um inflames and infuriates the people who are suspicious of him already yeah like you're not going to convince either side otherwise exactly so it it really does create a deeper wedge in the culture war totally but so the mandate we should talk about um what the mandate is um like what yeah do you know what it is i I have (laughs) i literally copy pasted some quotes from an article because i i knew that i would be like hung over and also wasted yeah um well that's the perfect call though they they cancel each other out yeah and then you're lucid and i'm starting to feel good now i felt pretty bad all day i kind of did too i was just like you know sickly and oversensitive like the light really hurt my eyes i know yeah (laughs) it sucked it's like what have i done um okay so um let's see uh so 
The expansive rules mandate that all employers with more than 100 workers require them to be vaccinated or test for the virus weekly, affecting about 80 million Americans and the roughly 17 million workers at health facilities that receive federal Medicare or Medicaid also will have to be fully vaccinated. Biden is also requiring vaccination for uh, employees of the executive executive branch and the contractors who do business with the federal government with no option to test out that covers several million more workers so it's basically a full-on mandate for federal workers and then like one of these like nudge theory things for private companies with a hundred employees and over right where like your options are like one is like the unpalatable but convenient option of just getting the vaccine and getting it over with. And then the other one is like the equally unpalatable, but probably more inconvenient option of testing all the time. Yeah. I mean, I got tested all the time Yeah, by HBO and it was, I and got vaccinated anyway, though they didn't mandate yeah. it. Though I guess now they probably would. Yeah. Um, but I had to do both and it was like, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Annoying. It's not, yeah, it's not the most inconvenient, but I guess if you ha- had a smaller business, it totally would be. But if you, you know, had to show up like every day to a job and get tested every week, that it, I mean, become, it, you know, gets more and more annoying. The part that makes me feel like the craziest is yeah. that the virus isn't even that lethal anymore, is my understanding. Like, it's less lethal the delta variant the delta for, variant and then um, and then people who have been vaccinated can still contract it but apparently it lessens the, yeah. the symptoms yeah i'm doing a jack off motion with yeah. my hand <laughs> uh which is all good and great you know yeah like i'm willing yeah to be like of course get tested because there's a virus you know and we have to manage the virus in some way right um obviously i think forcing people to get vaccinated is monstrous yeah and the other thing is that (sighs) and everyone being like you already get the polio vaccine to go to school it's nothing crazy or new you know it's like it reminds me of like um when liberals were during the Trump administration constantly talking about how like this isn't normal, you know, and I'm like, this isn't normal. Like, why are we pretending like showing our medical paperwork yeah. to go to restaurants and being forced to like get a very recently FDA approved vaccine? Yeah, the literally like I read some crazy uh study about how um young men are like six times more likely to um experience heart problems from the vaccine than they are to experience any um lasting negative effects from the virus itself which like why are we doing this again i mean and by the way i'm all for vaccinating like old and immunocompromised and fat people like by all means (laughs) by all means i'm serious and i think like the vaccines overall probably do um you know have a positive effect overall in vulnerable sure. populations. Yeah. I'm not even out here being like the vaccines are like, uh, uh, you know, poison or like don't work or anything like that. Yeah. I'm willing to concede that they are effective and work on that, some level. Yeah. yeah. And that COVID does exist in some capacity. <laughs> um, but it not like there being so few fatalities and the stuff in australia just seems really like, crazy like, i what like the that we're is, calling it australia now what the Aus- australia. australia what the fuck is going on in australia um i think it's like why are they th- being like that penal colony yeah stuff? it's like now it's like a new contemporary like biomedical penal colony where you can only get like six alcoholic drinks seamless to your door by um some wage slave oh my god like they track oh your God. alcohol oh consumption too. And you know what you know what sucks about the all this Australian like a concentration camp style measures like all the masking it doesn't even conceal the Australian accent. You can still <laughs> still hear it through the mask. Mm-hmm. So heinous. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing on Bondi Beach? It's like totally empty. It's is it because they're like president or whatever is a woman? Or is that New Zealand? Oh, that I don't know. Who's like whose fault is this? 
in Australia? Yeah. Amy Therese, clearly. <laughs> She's the president. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on in Australia, but um, in America, it's funny because the other thing is like, I was, I was reading some tweets from um, Kyle Kuklinski and Ken Klippenkuk. I just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who? Ken Klippenstein and Kyle, oh. Kyle Kuklinski. I always read his name as Kyle Kuklinski. They're just like professional leftists. Kuklinski. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And they were both kind of like saying the same thing. And I was like, did these guys just get their talking points from like the same like keynote what handed out by about? the Democratic Party? I'll pull up the tweets. Um, I think Klippenstein was like being ironic and he was talking about um was he the guy who was like um you can quit your job yeah and if you yeah that i clearly i was like okay weird stupid joke yeah and then i saw people quote tweeting it is there's just so much like misfiring on the internet because everyone is so mentally ill like, yeah like, autistic now that well, people are just really not understanding each other he was his tweet was the vaccine mandate doesn't actually force you to get vaccinated you can always just quit your job can't afford to you should have budgeted better and it's like yeah. he's clearly being ironic sarcastic making a right, joke he's right. not being earnest but like deep down inside that's what he earnestly believes like when it comes down to it it's yeah. like him versus the deplorables like totally. guys like him so totally. it's like there's no satire involved <sighs> yeah and then the other one like, I don't even know if I can find him. Um, Biden's new vaccine mandate is so oppressive, tyrannical, dictatorial, and fascistic that you don't even have to get the vaccine under it and can just get tested. This is Hitler, Stalin, Mao, and Pol Pot combined to me. So he's oh also God. being like kind of ironic. And if you're a federal worker, can, can't you not test out? Yeah, you can't test out. Like if you're a cop, you have to get vaxxed? And like the thing that I don't get about these like leftist media types also that are like professional and like um, polished. They're not like weird freaks on the internet. Mm -hmm. Like, do they not understand or worse, do they understand, but are unwilling and unable to acknowledge it that like these things get rolled out in phases, meaning your like civil liberties get rolled back in phases. It's not like they like throw you in a concentration camp overnight. I gotta say, I did not see this coming. What? Like, having to show my papers yeah. and, like, you know, mandated vaccines. Yeah. I kind of was like, no, they're not going to, they can't force you to get it. That would be crazy. Yeah. Like, early on. And, like, got it due to, like, social pressures and wanting to be a good sport and really just, you know. Yeah. And I'm compliant. Work. I'm compliant. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah, no, me t- I think most people are compliant. Yeah. And I think most people, again, would be willing to comply if, like, the people issuing all these, like, diktats were credible or at least had the appearance of credibility. Exactly. That's why it's so demoralizing. Mora- morale is very low. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think the vaccine mandates are also, like, designed to break our, break our spirits even more so they can move on to the next phase. Yeah. Which is like what uh, <laughs> social credit scores? Oh God, Anna! Don't. Like international passports? <gasps> I don't know. I hate. I hate feeling surveilled. Me too. I hate feeling like you know treaded on. I really do. Me too. <sighs> we didn't. My parents didn't emigrate to to America. Yeah, so I could live like this. To live under a more gay and retarded, but technologically superior version of the Soviet Union exactly um (laughs) but it's funny because like leftists will also be like the texas abortion law is a ban and then at the same time be like biden's vaccine mandates aren't technically a mandate (laughs) yeah it's like crazy to me unless you're one of the millions of people that have a federal job yeah and like have to i'm i I'm probably never going to see this data, but I would like to see the data on like breakthrough infections, which like the CDC does not track anymore. If I'm correct, like the data on adverse reactions to 
the vaccines. I'm sure like that data is hard to collect because there's probably also a lot of nuts who think they're having an adverse reaction and like self-report, like self-diagnose. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, not to sound like re- like a hippie, but mm-hmm. like the mind and body are really one. Yeah. You know, Ditto mm-hmm. goes for like long COVID sufferers. Which are like, something like three or four to one women over men interesting yeah 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 i think i I have long COVID. (laughs) yeah it's like do you have brain fog are you exhausted oh my god (laughs) (laughs) i didn't even know i had COVID, but i think i have long i think i've had COVID my whole life (laughs) yeah you had pre-covid yeah i think i've yeah i've had these symptoms for a long time no obviously it does have like cognitive effects and yeah is a real disease but so even is though like, I barely know anyone who's <laughs> who's been like negatively affected. Who's but so is being is. like a weird mandatory shut in who has to refresh their screen all the time because there's literally nothing to do. You know, I mean that's which was everybody Glenn, last winter. Well, yeah, and that's why things are as bad as they are, especially in the online landscape. Yeah, is like because people are crazier and like the mental yeah, health yeah. effects. Yeah, apparently we just didn't factor that in when we made all these decisions about how to win know, the battle against COVID-19. That's also crazy. Yeah. I mean, uh, Glenn talks about this. What the mental. He's yeah. I mean, health, yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, I, everybody has become kind of more deranged and more entrenched. Yeah. In their like ways of thinking. Despair. Yeah. All time high. And I feel like, you know, most people that, we know or encounter online are you know adults such as ourselves who have experienced the world before covid that's what freaks me out about like the new generations of like little kids coming up who do not have that experience and on one hand it's a blessing because you don't know what you're missing you know yeah i mean it's not a blessing blessing. at all but but you think it's gonna be it's not gonna be like this forever I mean, I think that it's going to be dour and austere for a long time with like successive new interventions that are rolled out in the name it's of just so, like flattening the curve. It's so arbitrary. Well, yeah. I went to a screening the other night. Everyone was masking in the theater. Yeah. And no one even told us to right but there was just this mass kind of consensus and Mm -hmm. then afterwards there was a reception which was in an even smaller room Mm -hmm. where people were drinking like hors d'oeuvres and having cocktails and talking and everyone took their masks off immediately right it like made absolutely zero sense well it's like when you go to a restaurant so and you have to wear the mask while talking to the hostess, but then you sit down and you're like two feet away from the next party over and you can just take off your mask. I mean, none of it makes sense. And also I feel like I have found, point, I, f- I have found myself putting on a mask to like cross like a boundary, like from, I'm like, Oh, I'm going inside. I better put my mask on uh-huh. and then getting inside, taking my mask off. Yeah. <laughs> like literally putting on to like walk through like a doorway yeah no it's crazy did i tell you about the guy who yelled at me he like mask shamed me what in this economy yeah in 2021 in like a year and a half after it was cool i was on the train and the baby pulled the mask off and i literally didn't have time to put it back on like i wasn't even like not masking is everyone on the train masking no not even i see people getting off the train maskless all the time yeah totally and i have to say like i'm kind of um like frazzled and forgetful especially now and i sometimes just forget to wear the mask on the train and nobody cares but this guy got on um with one of those like lgbtq plus plus like cat on a keyboard type haircuts Mm -hmm. not that i should talk but like you know homemade bangs (laughs) like mental patient hair and like screamed at me about wearing the mask and he was like stand like he he was like you know six four and he was like standing over me while i was sitting it was like screaming and only after it happened i was so shook and i had yeah. to like emotionally eat and only after it happened did i realize i should have just pretended to speak only russian and not understand him yeah pretend you're but a hasidic lady yeah 
but I like next time. Yeah, next time. Yeah, no one's ever yelled at me for not wearing a mask. I thought that and was an I urban legend on the, on the subway. <laughs> on the subway. <laughs> no, but I vape all the time. I did get yelled at for vaping in the Delta um, Sky Lounge. Oh, really? You're not allowed to. They were like, it. we'll kick you out. I was like, oh, fuck. I You're like, just I'm like, so, a- I was stoned. So I like, wasn't thinking about it. Wait, do you bring weed on the plane? I like to get do edibles before I go to the airport. Oh, smart. It's yeah. It's like part of my, yeah, yeah. my rhythm. Yeah. So does my sister. I like couldn't bring myself to do that because I'm like so like such a little control freak in airport. I kind of like how harder it makes stuff. Yeah. Know? But yeah, I like that. <laughs> Just like, you know, you're always ready for a challenge. <laughs> exactly. You can't get your luggage on, on the, just that a little like, trolley. More, yeah, like, where is the gate again? <laughs> and you the feel fear, like Greg or Samsa. Kind of fun. Or like Joseph K or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I feel stoned right now. I'm sorry. I'm like operating on so many levels of like exhaustion. And yeah, the, you had a you had a long night hangover. at the King Crimson show. The the cool thing about that show also was um, I don't think I know any King Crimson. Songs. Oh, I don't either. This is a band Eli what did it sound likes. Like? That he, it's like very proggy and jammy, and it like goes on. It's like ma- like very the pinnacle of male autism. Yeah, like Rush. Sort of. It's like I think like the bassist, who's like this Jew from Brookline, also played with Peter Gabriel, so it has kind of like proto genesis vibes but better okay um and it's like epic yeah okay and winding (laughs) and melodramatic oh and you know what it sounds like really um i feel like people are not going to really appreciate this Mm. comparison but you will it sounds like the music that they play at like Russian variety shows on the boardwalk, such as the one that we saw on your birthday in 2019. Yes. Okay. I can get into that. Yeah. It's cool. It has a distinctly Russian tinge. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll check it out. But they had like three drummers on stage <laughs> and Eli was like, man, I would, I would love to drum for that band. Like, well, maybe, you know, they have three. Why not a fourth yeah, one? Get in there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> just run up on stage. Um, but the bathroom line was just like winding around the block for the men's bathroom. It was like an MNZ sample sale, but like the other gender, mm. I felt so good about myself, like breezed past. And then the usher was like, get back in line, sir. <laughs> um, you haven't done that joke in a while. No, it's a, a good bet. Yeah. But it was, no, it felt great to bypass all the men. Yeah. Break the glass. Do you, how, what ratio do you think of men to women were there? Oh my God. I don't know. It was like, like really dismal, right? It was really bad. It was like 10 to one or something. Yeah. It was insane. That sounds about And right. all the women, like all the men look like camp or Yarvin and all the women look like they did like mature lesbian porn. It was like that kind of vibe, like grizzled yeah. old ladies who look like they eat each other out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. That lemon party. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> That sounds fun, though. Yeah, I'm it was like, cool. I would go to a concert. Yeah, I'm into live music now. Was it like really crowded? No, it wasn't even sold out. There oh, was like wow. empty seats, but it wasn't like COVIDy. No, not at all. It was you it, didn't have to mask inside. No, or I mean some people did, but yeah. it was like very optional discretion. But That's it got good. moved from Forest Hills to Beacon Theater because um, I think the band is like very they have some sort of politics that i'm not aware of that they i think maybe they weren't down with all the covid restrictions in the oh, forest hill stadium interesting yeah. cool yeah rock on yeah um i saw the schrader movie oh and he sick. was there yeah no mask huh not even for a second <laughs> alpha yeah that's sick it would make me so sad to see paul schrader wear a mask yeah you know like in general it makes clipped. me sad to see men wearing masks yeah like old men any kind of man i find it emasculating a little bit e-mask exactly sorry. exactly um i'm like extra hungover so i'm gonna do all my like corny ass donald Good. fagan dad jokes <laughs> <laughs> emasculating
Yeah, I think you're right because it's sad. It's sad to see a man masking women like male look, nurse vibe. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. It's like very adjunctifying. A woman masking, of course, she should hide her face. Yeah. So only her husband can exactly. look, look upon it and all of course. Yeah. <laughs> It, it lends a mystique. Like if you're not that attractive, <clears throat> it's good. If you're very attractive, it's good. Yeah, totally. Because either way, you know. Yeah. Keep the sun off the nasolabial folds. Yeah. <laughs> Minimize hyperpigmentation. Don't have to wear sunblock. Bypasses that whole mm-hmm. charade. <laughs> that charade. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Uh, you can make your eyes really pop. Yeah, just do like weird Cat like eye. Sephora makeup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a Gwen Stefani, like rhinestone bindi. Mm-hmm. Euphoria. Totally, yeah. Mm. Um anyway. I hate I hate this COVID and I wish <laughs> I know, it sucks. I wish we were on another uh, alternate reality wavelength, you know, where none of this ever happened. <laughs> yeah. God it's yeah every day but i i don't know who i don't know how or when we're ever gonna get out of this like shitty little loop i mean it's not as bad as it was like a year ago you know in the city at least for the most part people yeah are totally. fun basically ignoring covid regulations or like you know well it's not as implementing extreme and in your face and like front loaded in the sense that like you know you don't have to like <clears throat> hand sanitize around all around the clock and like wait in line for groceries and that sort of I thing. I basically but never wear a mask. Yeah. You don't have to. And and I, I'm actually frankly impressed that most people in New York don't seem to care that much, but well, it's so we've really like, I don't know. It's just so harsh in a city. Like yeah. I feel like quarantine was so bad and bleak and yeah bleak. and obviously a ton of people left and now people are back and so they never really affected by it anyway but right i just think new yorkers don't have like as much tolerance for that i'm surprised people do wear masks i'm like it's fucking hot like ugh. you know it's just uncomfortable yeah. i just i have ugh, i sound like such a brat but whatever. Yeah, yeah yeah no i i agree with you um but i i'm more worried about like yeah the kind of subtle and insidious little um, ways mm-hmm. in which they will erode basic freedoms and make. What do you think is going to happen next? I have no idea. I'm How not much a worse can I'm get? a retard. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. When they hand out the death sentences, they'll shoot everybody else for being unvaccinated, but they'll shoot me for uh, alleging that uh, sunscreen is carcinogenic. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you vindicated in that? Then they find one way or another yeah Yeah, you will be you will be but you wear sunscreen now i do well because i got a fancy skin treatment Mm. that required sunscreen so i have to continue to wear it to prevent future hyperpigmentation so i'm on the sunscreen chain now yeah yeah you mean that's just you you have to if you're doing retinol or i just got you got a chemical peel or something i had um something called Lays MD. Okay. Which is like a, it's like a laser that resurfaces your skin and it like melts off the hyperpigmentation. I think I'm going to do another treatment because it helps. looks good. It looks better than before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but it really like, looking at it. Yeah. It like peeled for like a week and it was disgu- I did this like a month ago. Okay. But it's a cool treatment. It's so kind of like, like retinol. Yeah. It's like accelerated mm. instantaneous retinol. Wow. Basically. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Because I can't be on the retinol apparently because of the breastfeeding. Oh my god! For yeah, real? This, this is what this dermatologist said. Oh, that's. I went to a fancy dermatologist for the first time in my life. It was it's, like very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so well, I am on the sunscreen now, cocked and chastened, <laughs> returning to my listeners with my tail between my legs. You don't want that hyperpigmentation. You don't want that smoke. No. No. That melasma. Um, um, what else is in the news? <laughs> Brandy. 
Oh my God, Brandy Melville, totally. It'd be funny if we did the whole show and like forgot about the- that. Was a big yeah. yeah. Well, so do you do you remember when I first got into Brandy? Yeah, it was like around the time we started the pod. Yeah, in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, this is and when bike shorts were becoming a thing. Yes. Yeah. And I had just never been to a Brandy before. And there were so many in New York. Yeah. And like, I do find the clothes to be really cute. Because yeah. Because I covet that kind of like waspy Gen x And I love how affordable they are. And of course, mm-hmm. the one size thing. Um, yeah, they're great. They're disposable. Like if you yeah exactly fuck something up like spill wine all over yourself or like a burn a cigarette hole in it you can just discard it and buy a new sweatshop manufactured item the next day exactly emblazoned with like like white supremacy dollars yeah Yeah, but i did note you know obviously some of the tags say john galt in them right and some say brandy melville and just in general the vibe of the store uh-huh. has always seemed a little they were s- selling that wealth of nations t-shirt yeah the john galt stuff the one size the body fascism the uh-huh. uniformity like i was like this store has like a fashy vibe it does uh which is and they what really I like doubled about. down on it well yes like i was alchemically drawn to brandy before i read the business insider article that we're going to talk about like yeah. a moth to flame and I wandered, like mm-hmm. stumbled in there with the baby and felt really perverted. I'm like um, Strangers with Candy, Amy Sedaris, like Jerry Blaine. Totally. You're like, like hello, fellow way kids. too old and grizzled <laughs> with a baby to be sh- That's That's my TV with pilot. With a baby, buying baby tees? Yeah, that fit me and the baby alike. Literally bu- buying tiny shrunken mommy, baby tees. Mommy wants her baby t-shirt yeah, too. That say like Arbeit macht frei. I, I mean, I showed like, you that saint moritz shirt i got yeah that's very like fashy but i think like that would be a great tv show about like a woman who's nearing 40 and she and is does not look like any other brandy shop girls who are like tall and blonde (laughs) and like works she's the you know works as a shop girl yeah and for some reason the racist store manager just really likes her because she's also racist she excels in the group chat she's a crypto fascist just like yeah the founder of brandy yeah I'm <clears throat> we'll get into the business in, inside well, how article. bad do you want to be in that group chat <laughs> it doesn't seem that I think it would make me uncomfortable honestly yeah I mean also the because the Hitler stuff and the it's just cringy and exactly. corny it's corny I'm like come on man relax it's, it's not just even so edgy. Italian yeah it's so okay so there was a smoking gun and yeah. the reason I yeah so back in 2018 I was like what the fuck is up with Brandy Melville and I was like very lazily doing some investigative uh-huh. research and I even at our live show I was like if anyone works at Brandy like can you tell me about your experiences and a couple girls kind of did and they were like it's weird they take your photo every day they make right. sure girls told me that like they make sure you don't like get above a certain weight and stuff uh-huh. But Love nothing it. really like this. And then this Business Insider article comes out mm. um, about the totally like heinous and racist business practices <laughs> of Brandy Melville. It's called being Italian. I'm sorry. Well, I in yeah, it was an Italian brand. The Italians are the most racist and rapey people on the face of the earth. Yeah. Big time. Anyway. But you called it, in other words, before there was it, a smoking gun. It was clear as day to me. Yeah. You know, and the, the you know, people love to say the word crypto fascist. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of the only times where I think it actually describes like that. This is literally what crypto fascism is. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like <laughs> this brand yeah that much like real fascist has a really strong aesthetic uh-huh. <laughs> um that's um covetable for young women who are easily impressed by power exactly it does and like it a, does a deal also. A they weird, love a bargain yeah it conveys yeah power the one size thing mm-hmm. the like uroboros of the way that they like photograph the girls who come in and the girls who work there and it like it's so then they are able to create not only like create desire Mm -hmm. but like feed into it with like (laughs) 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And literally create the designs also because the girls are effectively providing free R and D for them. Completely. Yeah. And now they've been doing, yeah, they've like, they've, they've always sold like Swiss stuff. Yeah. You have that little Swiss t-shirt. Yeah. Um, which is clearly like, and the St. Moritz shirt has full like male fantasies, like fashy font yeah. and like, you know, uh, clear as day. And now they're doing like hardcore, like band, like fake band t-shirts. And there's one that literally has like a boot the boots that says indie. Yeah. But it's like a very skinhead kind of design. Yeah. The skinhead boots. They they're, should have printed it with like red laces or something, but it's black and white. Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like they've upped the ante. a little too chintzy for that. Yeah, like they've really been flirting with like fashy symbols more yeah. and more. And I really hope they don't close. Um, I don't either. Because I like to get my, I told you this in our in our text, but yeah. I'm, I'm rebelling against athleisure. Right. I'm not wearing like stretchy yoga pants and stuff to the gym anymore. Yeah, it makes you feel like disgusting it and a feels loser. Gross. Like, yeah. And it feels like, casing in this gross way yeah. like, i just don't actually like the feeling of all those like fabrics yeah you're like jet cycle bossa like baby bologna. exactly exactly like, and the colorways are yeah this like i don't know very like kanye mid-tier mid-market kanye like yeah topes and stuff like you can't even really get like they cute. lack it's funny because athleisure the kind of mainstream stuff that you get they lack the sophistication to like knock off kanye's palette so it's like too it's all just a little off it's like too camel or too beige exactly or too tan it's not like a subtle sagey gray green yeah. or something so i'm like going back to basics and i'm wearing like cotton bralettes mm-hmm. and like gym shorts yeah and like sophie sh- like i'm wearing like cotton stuff to the gym and just cycling through like brandy stuff because so that's where i go now to get like athleisure cool like hot gym clothes yeah because they really have it like on long yeah they do and like um they should you know what they should do i'm i'm going to give them a great Mm -hmm. idea for their next design they're not going to hear because um i'm almost 40 and look very semitic but Mm -hmm. um (laughs) My idea is that they should print some photos from the um, Lenny Reifenstahl um, Africa photo oh books on the t-shirts, especially since they refuse to employ black people. Which I don't think you said you've seen black girls I've work seen, there. In New York. In they New ha- York. I've seen a couple of black girls. They're always <clears throat> really beautiful and have light eyes and, and or are mixed. Okay. They don't, they don't okay. employ like... They straight up don't employ black people. Well, no, they do. They do. They employ in New York. I don't know how it is anywhere else. The security the security guards are all like Nigerian or Senegalese or like African guys. And that lends it an even more perverted air because it's like a harem where they're guarding these like um, porcelain skinned lily white Uh underage concubines. Interesting. And they're like cheap flimsy wares. What an incredible store. And it's just like these like... (laughs) noble and silent african men so here's um here's a totally um here's a quote i don't condone this by the way from the business insider no 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 we just i think find it just compelling i mean it's well it's compelling not even because you know evaluatively it's like good or positive or like aesthetically strong it's just like an anomaly in today's landscape totally. of like body positive a advertising s- yeah, a sto- store for sexually active teens that's remorselessly um, like f- fascistic so there was a day when stefan told us stefan is the marsan yeah is the ceo take everything but the three smallest sizes off the floor a former <laughs> brandy melville employee who worked at stores in california and new york starting in 2003 said from that moment on we did not carry anything above a size four for Marsan, political correctness is blasphemy, Sorgi said. The CEO broadcasts his prejudices to executives, calling black people primitive and claiming that women only create problems. But to, <laughs> but to secure their spot in the world of Brandy Melville, employees at all levels said they had to endure and enforce Marsan's beliefs. Oops, we just had to go along with it because we needed visas and we didn't want to be fired. It's like funny that all these executives are like coming out of the woodwork and being like, no, that, that guy was really horrible and racist. And I was just in the group chat because he needed <laughs> yeah. constant narcissistic supply. Yeah. So then, yeah, there's also this group chat yeah. that him 
and some of the executives yeah are where they send very racist memes um and they said in the article that he had in like the I don't remember how many, but it was like he had mentioned hit. Oh yeah. Holocaust and Nazi Nazi references appeared frequently. Hitler was mentioned 24 times in the more than 150 <laughs> screenshots insider viewed. <laughs> I mean, I just love the, yeah, 150, like some, of course this was going to happen. If you have being an Italian guy who runs a, horny evil store and then having a for group teams. chat where you send hitler memes <laughs> i know to do this for so long and it to just come to light now and it's kind of i feel like people don't really care well they don't care because brandy melville is a very niche demographic but also like well it's yeah. crazy because all of these write-ups are like um marson and his top executives are not like your typical executives they like to stay out of the public eye and they're like shadowy behind the scenes figures but they like are they though because they had an n-word group chat (laughs) in in like a time of like permanent like thoroughgoing surveillance yeah like i don't even uh, Borna scolded me for sending a pic of the baby over Instagram DM and was like, Zuckerberg owns your kid's image now, bitch. And I was like, fuck, I don't even do that anymore. Yeah. We're so thoroughly surveilled, you know? Of course. And people are so willing to snitch on each other. And this group chat seems pretty extensive. You yeah. Know? Like it did not seem like inner sanctum. Like, you know, like yeah. my, no one in my group chats would ever betray me there's but they're very insular they had like 60 people up in there and like it's a bunch of like and the top and mid tier heinous it's like monkey stuff and like hitler like auschwitz humor it's like so dumb and like what was the one it was like hitler won the the prize in like barbecue or something some stupid shit like that like yeah like fifth grader yeah but it's funny it's like it is very like juvenile compulsive humor i.e italian humor mm, totally they have the humor they are not known hum- for their like sophisticated no <laughs> senses of humor no and like it's funny because you know i i've talked about working at this italian restaurant where i was a hostess before the pod and all the guys were italian they were like very casually racist and sexist which was like no skin off my back i don't care but they um all all with the exception of one were married to black women too interesting probably because they're racist and sexist but still you know like they're they have a different relationship well it's very like they're yeah they're racist in the most like vulgar way yeah which doesn't always necessarily correlate to like deep uh, deep deep-seated hatred you know no they have they literally just have a reflexive compulsion to be racist and rapey yeah which is then like it's I think the fascist aesthetics of Brandy Melville are all like part of it too. You know? Well, I did. And some, that's why it's so um, enticing. Well, right. But I, you know, it's funny because um, it, like on the surface, they're very Hitler, but behind the scenes, they're Mussolini. They're fully Mussolini. Yeah. Like they're kind of like melodramatic rather than yeah. like, micromanaging like serious austere totally but it's funny because like um i did some research on this guy uh stefan marson the ceo because i was like marson that's a strange name it doesn't sound italian to me it sounds like french? old and french um it sounds like medieval Is french sick fuck french well i think he's so I I, um, recruited some of my uh, race science friends to get to the bottom of this name. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't, I I was hoping for some kind of like secret Nazi smoking gun, like his great grandfather provided, um, you know, brown shirt uniforms to marauding Swiss Nazis or something and like nothing of the sort. But um, he does come from one of these kind of old textile industrial families, apparently um, from the Swiss border, which is why uh, hence all the heavy Swiss imagery. Like they have a new suite of shirts of which I want to snap one up. That's like a very kind of like Alpine. And it says like Los Angeles, Switzerland. Why the um, Boston Nantucket stuff? 
That I don't know, but I was thinking about um, there being like a very distinct correlation between that type of like um, Italo Franco Swiss Euro trash mm-hmm. and like Boston New England yeah American no trash. there's something very interesting like going bumpkin on Switzerland and bumpkin Cape Cod is the same vibe very in a weird way yeah no 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 it's aspirational it is yeah well the Boston stuff especially or like then more so like the nantucket martha's vineyard martha's stuff obviously vineyard, yeah. for me as like southwestern trash yeah you know appeals very much um in that like waspy blue blue blooded aspirational way yeah exactly Definitely. and it's funny because um in the article they talk about how so Brandy's technically not a business. It's a brand. This is the interesting part. Yeah. Yeah. It's owned by something called YYGM, which is a Swiss company that owns the company trademark. Um, This explains their heavily Swiss branding. Um, They sell olive oil on their website for $25. Mm. Um, And every Brandy store in the U.S. is owned by a separate company. um, Which is very interesting. Yeah. Called Bastiat or some version thereof in honor of the libertarian economist Frederick Bastiat. And it's an unusually complex structure that's obviously designed to minimize any one executive's like liability, make yeah. it harder to sue. Um, they're, they're a private company, so they don't publish their revenue. Abercrombie, which previously in the United States served a similar role to Brandy Melville yeah. in the sense that it was racistly aspirational wanted to buy all of their stores interesting and i guess they placed a bid and failed wow i mean they must make so much money yeah i think i forgot what the figure was but because they don't publish their official yeah numbers you know you can only like guesstimate yeah um Marsan is an ardent libertarian, naming a sub-brand John Galt after the character from Atlas Shrek, just personal copies of which he displayed in early stores. I heard from a girl on Instagram that they still have Atlas Shrek in really? all the offices. Interesting. Business filings list Marsan as the CEO or director for each Bastiat company and the president of Bastiat USA. Yeah, so he's... So they kind of can't... I mean, there is rapey stuff as well in the... Is it Marson who raped that? No, it's girl? one of his executives who they have an apartment in Soho where the the prettiest and most promising employees are allowed to crash. Yeah, God. And some girl was sexually assaulted when it, the the twenty one year old who worked for the company. Yeah. He like took her out to dinner and yeah, and then she woke up and was maybe like, yeah. drugged her. Yeah. Um, cool. and you know, you know that guy was Italian. It, he sure was. I mean, they're all <laughs> Italian, and it's funny because, um basically it, it seems like stefan marson is just like the fail son of the original company but founder who's this guy son. silvio marson well he's, he's like failing upward he's a very successful businessman yeah yeah but he's very interesting and and um i i basically i i dm nicolo and was like can you race science this guy for yeah. me and he was like yeah he's like i looked at this web it was he literally just ha- uses this website that like um identifies italian family names and where they're most heavily concentrated or clustered huh. and the marsan name is is clustered in the piedmont and veneto region so it's like northern and central italy um they're probably from the north and um his name is stefan it's not stefano so he has like a kind of franco Uh, filiac version yeah so either his mother is french or the family's just pretentious like he's basically aspirational you think he loves his mom yeah her her mommy (laughs) milkers her fresh alpine unpasteurized (laughs) breast milk that he's been (laughs) sipping on (laughs) you think breastfed too long or not long enough maybe just right i'm gonna go with too long yeah probably too long he seems like he hates women who aren't his mother <clears throat> definitely yeah 100 percent um but um i read a quote from one of their um female employees um and she says if i could say anything to the owners i would say you had such an amazing opportunity to be a safe inclusive space for young women and instead you took advantage <laughs> of them and i was like why would a retail environment be a safe, <laughs> yeah. inclusive space for young women? Yeah, what do you, why? Like, retail is literally designed to prey on the anxieties and insecurities <coughs> of young women. Wealth of nations, what? babe. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome it's, to the free market. 
Yeah, they need to do a great reset collabo. Ooh. It's just like a Klaus Schwab X Brandy Melville. There is, yeah. I just, I love going in there. Yeah. And just taking the temperature. And Forever 21, I used to feel this way more about. And lately, it hasn't been as, like, I haven't had as much jouissance in there. But I love, yeah, like, kind of doing a trend report in the yeah. stores and kind of seeing what's, like, you know, rising to the surface and, like, what's, like, kind of receding and, like, yeah. different. Oh, like, now they're doing low-rise bike shorts, you know? Yeah, they are. They're yeah, doing they're they're jeans. They're doing low-rise jeans, like, true religion-style yeah. jeans. yeah okay um i might go up in there tomorrow i'm thinking about You're getting like really um, wetted my appetite. i know i'm thinking about it well i, well, I want to get one of those like big oversized corduroy jackets that yeah they do, like that are like boyfriend fit because uh-huh. those are really really cute yeah totally why not it's, it's tis the season tis the season yeah i see i saw that they were coming with a lot of like um oversized corduroy and um mm-hmm. nylon bombers yeah red lining which seems also very skinhead to me dude it all i mean that's what it is yeah like the colors vary from outwardly racist to like subtly aspirationally racist the colors yeah Hmm. like you know they're either like occasionally they're very bright mostly they're kind of like muted and restrained yeah lots of like malthusian hunter green navy white yeah cream shale yeah cornflower blue (laughs) the colors long 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 live i'm sorry to hear about their Um, corporate misdeeds but but I just don't, I, there's not another store like, that's what, like what you said, it's an anomaly. And I feel like, you know, somebody like Marson, he's like the perfect storm because on one hand, he's an Italian, so he has all that racist, rapey energy. But on the other hand, he's an Italian from the Swiss border, which <laughs> must, it must make him covet the even whiter people to the north because those people never really considered their neighbors to the south particularly white. Yeah. No, totally. So he's like, you know, aspirationally trying to achieve a more Swiss, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. refined aesthetic and texture in his own personal life by brutalizing young women throughout <laughs> his <laughs> chain of shops. He's very hands on. Yeah, he likes to personally like, make literally sure, hands on. He likes to make sure each girl's pussy is just <laughs> just, just right. tight enough to work it. A brandy, a I love how they're like. Location. Well, typically they hire on the basis of a photograph or even like an Instagram screenshot. And well, this was pay, the American Apparel model as well in that store. Um, you know, also had wide populist appeal. Yeah, except Dove Charney actually had. Act like good labor practices yeah something tells me brandy's labor practices are not up no. to snuff I which is why brandy it's not the real in, story in bangkok oh really which was How very was cool i mean i love to see brandy's all around the world and when i was in italy actually mm-hmm. i saw lots of stores that were very brandy-esque it's uh-huh. a very like in rome mm-hmm. there's tons of like they're not brandy but they're the same they sell like chintzy kind of like insta thought clothing and various like yeah styles and brands but is um, it like american inspired because brandy to me is very mm-hmm. kind of like american inspired no it's definitely more like for like italian okay like whores. young whores um but it's the same like mass produced like suggestion it's like very suggestive mm-hmm. of like similar themes and like they're they're built like brandy stores like mm-hmm. even though yeah brandy is because brandy melville is the the name yeah it's a beautiful story it's about an american girl who falls in love in rome with an english guy last name melville yeah so it's like that's what brandy melville is (laughs) (laughs) um and they don't have any of that like it's all just very like trashy italian yeah but here they have the the waspy nod that that elevates it yeah how many but are there like a lot of brandy stores in rome or just like that one 
Well, it's not, they're not brandy stores, but they're like, yeah, there's ton. I walked past tons and even went into a couple being like, mm-hmm. is this a brandy Melville? <laughs> yeah, and like, it's like, no, everything's like a little different and a yeah. little like, but the same like retail design, like interior design, kind of like the way that products are displayed and the way uh-huh. that the stores are kind of like the inventory is just is hung and stuff. Yeah. And the like. way that it looks kind of sun bleached. A little bit, yeah. And shipwrecked. Yeah, exactly. And I love like, like the piles hangers and piles, are covered yeah. in like fabric, which looks, it kind of makes it seem more high end, but it's actually probably very cheap to achieve to just like wrap cheap yeah. discarded fabric mm-hmm. all over. Um, totally. Yeah, lots of like fabric. You really get like a textile feeling yeah. of like, oh yeah, like all of these clothes were like mass produced somewhere hellish where there's lots and lots of fabric and minorities yeah. yeah yeah all the same kind of fabric just in slightly different like variations i love like that one part of the story where they touch down in ontario it's like the th- three top executives and yeah they're like ew there's a lot of indian and african people here it's like what <laughs> what do you expect it's ontario you retards <laughs> i know um those poor girls which ones the brandy employees the hot ones that work there or the less hot ones who got turned away because their bmi was like well both. 0.5 of a digit both. over the you know it's like that scene in casino where he's like screaming at the um dancers to mm-hmm. lose weight <laughs> literally he's like sam rothstein i bet you he would resent that comparison because he's probably also a raging anti-semite of course of course they should just publish they should just do brandy t-shirts with like straight up anti-semitic caricatures on them <laughs> those would fly off yeah the they should lean in yeah and really like go openly. full full throttle my question to you is do you think that an expose like this will even hurt brandy's brand good question i no my hunch is kind of no because the clothes have such libidinal power over mm-hmm. people and generate so much desire right. that I don't think people will be able to. And just the, I think the demo of who would be outraged by an article like this and the demo of people who shop at Brandy Melville, um, I just don't think there's that much overlap. Yeah. And I feel like there are like, the clientele of Brandy is by and large like retarded preteens and teens whose mothers are like, don't even try it on. I'll get it all. Yeah. I and never like, try anything on at Brandy. Cause yeah. I know I'm like, what's the point, but they don't understand the references and the ones Mm-mm. who do probably get off on being like little edge Lords. The other thing I was surprised by is that there's like a robust Brandy resale market, which I didn't really on know. Depop, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have all the rare brandies. You have some, I, I have my, um, mm. wealth of nations, Adam Smith shirt, which is like, you got the wealth of nations. Yeah. Stuff. I, I need to be, snab- be snatching that stuff up. Cause like, like the U S hardcore punk yeah. t-shirt. I'm like, I should get that actually. Well, forever 21 used to, I used to have this really cute ringer tee from uh-huh. forever 21 that said Kurt Cobain and cursive really small. I know what you're talking about. I almost bought that. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm a, a 32 year old poser. Cause I, I was think like I have it maybe in storage still yeah. or something, but I loved that shirt. I thought it was so weird and cool. It's and so bizarre. Yeah. I had like a weird sweat knitted sweater that had like a misspelled like eins. Yeah. It has kind of like Chinese, very like Chinese, like you can find stuff that has like weird misspellings and yeah, but not so much anymore. But whereas Brandy, yeah. It's weird, yeah. And I have a, a Martha's Vineyard cap. Ooh. And I have the yellow rat bastard long sleeve. Ooh. So I, I have, have I have a lot of good I used brandy to have stuff. the black short sleeve rat bastard and Adam stole it. Oh, wow. Does it f- fit? It was some? like an oversized one. Oh, okay. It was like a boyfriend fit one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But. Yeah. I'm going to... I wonder if maybe I'll just like as a an experiment put the brandies on Depop and see how much they'll go for. Don't sell them. Man. I feel Hold no. I know. Them. I'm it, especially if the stores go away. You know. I'm very sentimentally tied to them. Also, the the Adam Smith Wealth of Nations shirt, which is like 
the one I'm most tied to is like yeah. absolutely covered in pit stains because I like wore it. For, <laughs> yeah, like, all my brandy is soiled yeah. and yeah. It's like the disgusting. Resale value is not Though that might not help great. the value actually. For you, yeah. For the right, yeah. Yeah, for the right buyer. Yeah. Anna's pit stained <laughs> Wealth of Nations baby tea. Yeah. Like stained <laughs> with breast milk and sweat. <laughs> for sure. Tom. Um is any other brandy Melville thoughts? I feel like people are gonna be like they're really glossing over the rape stuff, but it's all unfortunate. It's just not as interesting as you know the the racist the n word group theory, chats rabbit and the, hole yeah and the business structure yeah and like you know what's really what's really going on yeah i want i want more of like a business minded expose of brandy like uh how their tax structure how they're evading. well they see they is, do seem very they do seem very secretive in that yeah in that regard what marsan's shell companies look like i want that kind of uh write-up yeah not the me too angle which you know i'm very sympathetic and feel bad yeah for the young ladies who uh, were probed by marsan's greasy wop fingers but <laughs> well he it isn't he no one's brought any allegations against, against him. him it's his his friends his it's buddies his under- his exe- yeah. underlings and executives yeah wow <laughs> but but you know forget forget like an international company like brandy think of all the women in Italy who work for Italian men. Oh my the entire God. country. The whole country. <laughs> we got to, we should invade Italy to protect the women and children <laughs> from the machismo of <laughs> <laughs> their male counterparts. Yeah, seriously. Damn. Um, oh, what else? <laughs> I miss pocket. Rome. I'm, I can't wait to go back. Yeah. One day. One day, yeah. Um, uh, what else was on our docket today? Mm. We did a, a long segment on Brandy. Oh, men not going to college. Oh, yeah. The activist show. Oh, the activist show. Let's just bring back The Apprentice. That's what people really want. Yeah, it's a sick and twisted little proxy. Is yeah. it, is, does this show exist yet or is it no, in I the works? It, it was announced. That okay. Like Usher. What's the... Priyanka, Priyanka Chopra. Jo- Priyanka Chopra Jonas. She's so hot. And Julianne, like literally who? Literally who? Why? <laughs> Why is there a Karen on this show um, when you've got Usher and Priyanka Chopra? So a gay guy and a chick who's married to a gay guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it's, oh, it's a show on CBS called The Activist. And it's... Um, uh, founded or sponsored by something called Global Citizen, which sounds shadowy and nefarious. It's like a competition reality show. Yeah. Um, the Activist is a competition series that features six inspiring activists <sighs> teamed with three high profile public figures working together to bring meaningful change to one of the three vitally important <laughs> world ca- causes health, education, <laughs> and environment. <laughs> more vaccines yeah literally they like i'm an activist for vaccinating my (laughs) (laughs) my friends and colleagues um there's a gnat oops oops, that's okay Uh, a a housefly straight up flew into my coffee today and i fished it out with a leaf and drank the coffee anyway (laughs) (laughs) with a leaf um but yeah no it's kind of I think this show is kind of brilliant, like the pitch, because they're basically saying the quiet part loud because people totally. are always like, oh, you're commodifying and performatizing activism. But it's like literally activism is already it's commodified perfect. and no, performative. In that way, it's like we should watch it. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels it feels like it's closing the loop. You know? You're yeah. Like, yes. It's like it's it's like when Trump won, I was like, yeah, I was like, this feels like this matches my like understanding of reality. Like yeah. ditto for the activist show. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, it's all <laughs> bullshit anyway. So <laughs> why not like gamify it on yeah. CBS? It literally lays bare mm-hmm. the underlying mechanics of good activism, which is great. And Jamila Jamil freaked out about it, of course. What did she have to say? She does. She doesn't like it. She's just she mad they didn't like ask yeah, her to I be know. a judge. I know because she was too busy hosting a show for like handicapped, <laughs> ugly people. <laughs> what? 
to like fight to the death in a Hunger Games type scenario. No, she does host a weird game show already. That's like yeah. seems like nonsense. Crazy. Wait, I'm going to try to find this Jamila tweet. No way. She took it. umbrage with it. Yeah. Um, why, why doesn't she try and be a competitor on it with her great I Way program or whatever? <laughs> Wow. With all her mental health activism. Fuck. She's raising Munchausen visibility every day. <laughs> um, wait, let me pull up this tweet. I like can't find it now because I'm you're drunk, drunk, but it was a good tweet and I feel committed and maybe I'll even, you know, I think let you, you some can dead air it. lapse and edit it out. I think you can find it. Oh, here it is. Got it. Um, couldn't they just give the money it's going to take to pay this unbelievably expensive talent and make the show directly to activist causes rather than turning activism into a game and then giving a fraction of the much needed money away in a prize. People are dying. Wow. She's literally just mad that they didn't ask her to be on the show. Completely. She, cause she would do it in a fucking second, which I don't know why they didn't ask her. Cause she's like kind of a shoe in for this type of definitely um, cutthroat and crave and competition. <laughs> i mean yeah i feel i feel really bad for her i would have like preferred to tune into the show with a jamila on board versus without yeah priyanka chopra is very i mean she's really hot yeah she is really hot like i really enjoy looking at her and i even watched the pilot to quantico the like fbi show she was on because i like wanted to see it was like when it was her first kind of big thing i think um which yeah jamila would just be such a more she'd be more satisfying and annoying and she really yeah. knows how to like um get under people's skin and you know be but she would make it all about herself yeah but that's literally what the show is about it's a bunch of people making it about themselves and like colliding like little bubbles against yeah. each other yeah um wait is J- uh, wait. priyanka is in an age gap relationship with the gay jonas is that correct oh right she's older yeah 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 she's really hot and has like a smoke and bod and the worst style imaginable I, I think i've said this mm. before but like like every indian hot woman and when there's so hot, many they, indian hot women though it's or hot indian women sorry i'm drunk yeah they're like indian very, <laughs> i said it too <laughs> um totally she has like <clears throat> the worst style and so does padma lakshmi like <coughs> sometimes i'll see like photos of them on my explore page and they're wearing like you know like a fishnet top with like a burberry officer's jacket yeah and like and yoga like studded, pants. studded flats yeah and i'm just <laughs> like what is this priyanka chopra jonas wow she's 39 i mean she looks great and Nick Jonas is 28. Whoa. Nice. Mommy. Yeah. Grooming. Mommy vibes. Well, <laughs> you know, gay guys really famously love tits. Totally. All men love tits. Gay guys just are afraid of vaginas, but you don't really ever have to see your wife's vagina. If you don't want <laughs> no. to. You avoid not that. the way, not the way they do it. I just like picture him like nesting in her bosom. She yeah. seems like she has an ample bosom. She definitely does. She's probably like oh, the yeah. closest thing we have to Salma Hayek oh, in this Uga. day and age. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Not not quite. Not quite, but she's you know, still insanely hot. Super hot. Um but it's so c- funny and perfect to have a show about oh activism. God, this, this outfit. I know, it's so chaotic. She's it's, wearing like a Chinese it's jacket. Like a, a floral <laughs> Chinese jacket with white <laughs> drapey pants, tights and stilettos. <laughs> and then like a weird like jade necklace. Yeah. Too. It's like all of her clothing looks like she so got it from weird. Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> yes. And just mixed and matched. She seems like the type of woman who would have those reusable Marshalls <laughs> bags in her home, even though she's like a multimillionaire. She seems like a Max a Maxinista yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, it's like all immigrant women are maxinistas definitely like literally that's where i'm gonna go after i go to to brandy you should and get some um discount like stila 
<laughs> and makeup forever makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely use it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's hilarious because it's like activism too. It's just like it's like, you know, take something as iconically activist as like the gay rights movement. It's like when they achieve their main victory, which is normalizing and legalizing gay marriage, it's not like they like pack up their bags and go home. Yeah, they have like, to keep doing it. To keep it moving. Because yeah. there's too many <laughs> salaries and reputations, not to mention egos on the line. Of course. You the gay just, rights industrial complex. Yeah, so then you have rages to like, on. pivot into a different but not unrelated arena like queer rights or like trans well, rights. Well, that's, or why, like, that's why the baby controversy really spread like wildfire, I think, because mm. people were like, finally someone said something like, plausibly homophobic Mm -hmm. and we can all really pile on and like elton john can (laughs) yeah wander out and like do a collab with like lil nas x and we can like you know we can all band (laughs) band together (laughs) like finally some thank god we thought no one would ever be homophobic again (laughs) yeah like all these like people can get together and do like a modern day rendition of imagine Mm -hmm. with gal gadot who should also be on the show definitely i'd love to see her jamila jamil donald trump Trump, (laughs) just like three-way yeah four-way with donald trump i saw some tweet that was like um about the taliban painting mm. over george floyd murals in afghanistan it's like what why the why fuck the are there fuck george, are floyd? george floyd murals? like I literally afghanis uh-uh. see a george floyd mural and they're like r.i.p omar from the wire like what are you talking about <laughs> <gasps> wow where did you see that that's crazy like on twitter yeah they got bigger problems in afghanistan like the 20 year u.s military occupation yeah. They don't need to be tripping about. Yeah, it's like apples and oranges. Mm-mm. But like that, that's your activism. I'm just, I'm so excited for all the uh, guest judges they're going to bring on. Like, I don't know, like George Greta Soros, Thunberg. Greta Thunberg. She should definitely be. Maybe she'll be on the show. She has to. She like Amanda Gorman. Mix. Oh, yeah. I'm actually now you're, you've really hyped it up for me. I'm really looking forward. I am too. To, I think that's the only way to really endorsed to kind of nihilistically embrace yeah um, i don't even think it has to be nihilistic i just like you know like we've said many times on the show you just like accept it for what it is which is like a chaotic and riveting work of extended performance art like 9 11 <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'm gonna like wake up eli and be like who was that guy that composer yeah, hey, said what did he 9/11 say 9 11 was a work of art again <laughs> He just like spousal murders me. (laughs) Dosh is here. We're doing the pod. (laughs) Um, Mm. If you were an activist, what would your cause be? Oh, um, hmm. Well, mental health. Okay. So that I could really make it all about me. I would make it about like getting your Adderall dosage right. Uh Just right. Yeah. (laughs) Like I'd advocate for like, the right meds uh-huh. and to have uh, yeah benzos legalize coke <laughs> That's what I, would I, would, I would try to legalize cocaine and <laughs> and um i think you should be allowed to say the r slur and not get in trouble for it well can you say it if you're mentally ill well exactly yeah that's part of the, the platform yeah. but if everybody's mentally ill then everybody can say the r slur and if everybody's queer everybody can say the f slur we're definitely getting more gay and retarded every day yeah so. i think this is the first episode where we've actually solved something <laughs> <laughs> what would you be an activist for anna uh body positivity totally but yeah really hot and skinny <laughs> just like not fascism at all not unhealthy levels of extremely low bmi just like normal healthy girls <laughs> cutting seed oils from their diets yeah you'd be a seed oil <laughs> microplastic uh, no i would be like an annoying seed oil and microplastics person or even more <laughs> annoying animal rights person and then oh. i would get snapped wearing leather and it would be over for me and like eating meat. yeah yeah 
yeah i just want to be photographed with bruno mars once in my life but you know i want like a side by side but realistically it's gonna be um, i would love for you to be photographed with bruno mars he's just like five foot tall like fully five foot tall and we could get to bruno we could yeah just saying (laughs) but you know it's not going to be a red carpet side by side it's going to be like that famous photo of bruno mars looking back at pete wentz (laughs) It's like You're utterly back starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> totally. His fedora adds a few inches. Bruno, come on the pod. Yeah. Why not? He seems he's he seems like he's way too positive for us. I know. He's like a, a ray of sunshine. I know. He's <laughs> we wouldn't vibe. No. He's gotta have a dark side though. There's a shadow a there. Huge dig. <laughs> <laughs> Anna his third leg that's why he's such a great dancer stop um, it anna i'm sorry <laughs> i'm um, so delirious um how, how long have we been going uh, an hour 26 oh we could definitely we can wrap it yeah do you have any insights about men not going to college probably a good, a good thing, thing. they dodged thing. a bullet yeah i think that whole you sent me yeah a wall street journal article about how men are like that like 60 percent of people in college are chicks yeah basically and how now colleges are in a tough place because they want to like raise you know the admission of men but it's a hard sell affirmative action we you know to be like we need more men but especially um, white men yeah but college is a crumbling institution and you know all the none of those chicks are in stem no well some of them are they're all getting like communications degrees yeah like gender studies i mean that's it also mirrors exactly what's happening in the workforce which is that like i don't know men built civilization so women could administer its decline one of the best things you ever said yeah i really need a brandy melville t-shirt put that on a tote yeah (laughs) i mean the thing is like it's it's also very beautiful in like a 9-11 20th anniversary mm, being yeah. the new year of covid style 911 mandate Taliban's back Taliban's back it's like beautiful in the same way in that It's so like, sweet the Taliban came back just in time for the 20th anniversary <laughs> of 911 so we could all like remember together Yeah yeah <laughs> Um no it's it has like the same kind of like glittering sheen to it in that college is now thoroughly stripped of credibility and prestige Mm. and is basically exposed for what it is which is like a commercial slash consumer industry and like women be shopping women be shopping for credentials (laughs) and that's yeah that's where women study communications and stuff which helps them get all those great fake jobs in marketing and Whatnot. yeah email jobs and you know they're great at f- even filling out one of the details that really stuck out at me that was like charming in that article was that women are better than men at filling out college applications not me not the way i do it. <laughs> um but that makes sense yeah yeah i mean sure checks out i wouldn't i'm not necessarily i'm not tripping about getting guys back in school because i think they should be like uh joining the army yeah. or like Killing you know working in manual labor or like yeah um i think that's probably more more vital for them to to pursue and college can be a uh, higher education can be kind of like a feminine domain yeah kind of in like how in like the antebellum south you want it to be like very well cultivated and interesting mm-hmm. so you could have like a good conversation with your husband exactly <laughs> you know and that's i'm i'm on board with that that's what i went to college for it was yeah. just to like <clears throat> be more interesting to men really by exactly reading, like, yeah 19th century german philosophy <laughs> certainly that hasn't helped me get any any work i mean it has in its own weird and circuitous way much yeah. as my college education totally. has helped but yeah, like yeah. but it's all who, who's to say we wouldn't have like acquired knowledge sort of holistically had we not been in institutionalized yeah. education yeah, probably this not. Is... I probably would have been like smoking crack <laughs> or something. <laughs> so college really kept me on the straight and narrow. Yeah. But I yeah, I mean, I think like in theory it's good that guys are not really going to college because it's useless. But 
at the same time, there's really nothing else other than war or euthanasia (laughs) or transgender to replace the college experience. I think Americans are overly attached to the college experience. No, I agree. Yeah, it, they should go work on like a boat or something, or like below deck. Yeah, hit Bravo show. Just kidding. I remember <laughs> yeah. that's like a show that I they need never... to be uh, dancers on cruise ships. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it was also like interesting, like reading the interviews with some of the guys who were like totally smart and fine and knew it was up and we're like yeah man i just like i feel like i have better opportunities outside of college like investing in crypto and Duh. i was like you go boy like Duh. you seem to yeah. have it figured out definitely there should be yeah i mean part of the college experience is also like the mingling and the, the her- heterosexual yeah exchange well, though not for me because i went to a women's college that is now well, defunct I had a, a grad program right Mm. that was like a a noise music noise music grad program yeah Yeah. so those guys were around but they were very marginal you know it was like and the some of the professors were men but i picture them like being like paul rudd and clueless but i bet you they were more like camp bot yet again (sighs) they were not great yeah i mean i didn't fuck anyone at mills not even close interesting no because they would yeah there was like 12 guys who were like noise noise musicians pursuing graduate degrees okay and i was just i mean i had a boyfriend at the time also rafi in la oh okay so i was like not really in that scene but it just the whole thing it was just different yeah because i didn't live on campus and i wasn't like doing the whole like state school like partying thing i was like just well getting existential and (laughs) listening well speaking of which um there was like a a article i saw in the post about how Rutgers is now um demanding that people are fully vaccinated even for remote courses so they didn't like let some like white male student back and i was just like you know back in the day when i was going there we called it sluggers because like the std rate was so high (laughs) um anyway anyway uh any, any we wrapped it up i think we we're have, fine, yeah, yeah we're good see you in hell see you in hell happy 9 11